So what is your favorite Jane Austen novel? Well, according to a poll from over on our community tab, it looks like you guys really love Pride and Prejudice. But did you know that back when Jane Austen first wrote Pride and Prejudice, that her father tried to get it published. And in the letter that he sent to the publisher, he likened it to a book called Evelina by Fanny Burney. Have you ever heard of Evelina or Fanny Burney? Not a lot of people have, but today we're going to be delving into who was Fanny Burney, what is this novel Evelina, and also how we can see Evelina and Fanny Burney's influence on Jane Austen's writings. Dashwood and this is my channel where I talk about classic literature and history. If you like either of those things, please subscribe. So first up, who was Fanny Burney and why are we talking about her? Well, Frances Burney was the daughter of a musician, Charles Burney, and she was born in 1752. She was a writer in the Age of Sensibility, and her debut work, Evelina, which we'll be talking more about here, was a sensation, and she went on to publish two other very famous works named Cecilia and Camilla, Camilla being Jane Austen's absolute favorite among Burney's works. And she also just led a very interesting life. She was a courtier at the court of Queen Charlotte for a while, and at the age of 41, she married a French immigré and became Madame Diarbly. Also, she had a mastectomy that she was awake the whole time and survived and lived a long time. So yeah, really tough there. We're gonna be talking about her because she was a fantastic author all on her own, and she really furthered the novel. I talk in my video I made about who was Jane Austen, how Jane Austen started creating characters that were really realistic. And while this is true, she didn't just sort of come up with this all by herself. There were a few authors right before her that were leading the way. I think the quote from Isaac Newton really applies where he said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And so really Jane Austen came along during an era where these women writers were really doing fantastic things and she stood on their shoulders and she took the novel to the next level. And of course one of those novelists was Fanny Burney and Jane Austen pretty much straight up almost names her when talking about the excellence of novels. Here in North Anger Abbey when she goes on that very famous sort of rant about how the novel is awesome, she says... It is only Cecilia or Camilla or Belinda, or in short, only some work in which the greatest powers of the mind are displayed, in which the most thorough knowledge of human nature, the happiest delineation of its verities, and the liveliest effusions of wit and humor are conveyed to the world in the best chosen language. Well, Camilla and Cecilia are both novels by Fanny Burney. And also Fanny Burney proved to the world that a woman can write a novel about everyday English life and have it sell well. And this is one of those moments where if you see another woman doing something that maybe you didn't think was possible, it gives you the hope that you can do it too. And that's what it did for Jane Austen. So let's talk about her breakout work, Evelina, that was first published in 1778 when Jane Jane Austen was just a girl. Evelina tells the story of Evelina. I know that was a shocking moment for you all. But Evelina is a young lady who is about to enter London society with her best friend. But her adoptive father is very worried about her because of course London is known as a city of vice versus virtue. Her adoptive father is this country clergyman who was everything great and noble and righteous and took her in after her mother died a most tragic death and her father was a scoundrel. Basically, a ton of drama went down before Evelina was born, which is part of the whole story of the plot. Anyway, because of what happened to her mother, her guardian's even more scared about her going to London. But she wants to go to London with her best friend and enjoy society and go to the exciting gardens and stuff and go to balls. And so he allows her. And she gets there and she discovers 
that she has country manners and is way over her head socially. Yeah, that's pretty much what the story is. And so we definitely see that comedy of manners of where she keeps messing up socially and it's all awkward and steep learning curve there in London. Anyway, there at one of the balls where she keeps making social blunders and while there she meets the very eligible Lord Orville who has no relation to the popcorn company. Anyway, he is everything that is also noble and honest and good or so it seems at least. If you've watched my video about how to be the ideal Regency girl, where I talk about Fordyce's sermons, then you might be familiar with Fordyce. And one thing that he talked about was honorable love versus false gallantry. Really, what was behind a man's gallantry? Was it honorable love or was it false? And so I think that's one of the themes we explore here with Lord Orville and with her other suitor that is named Sir Clement Willoughby. That's right. Willoughby. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So Sir Clement is a bit overbearing and between that and the fact that she already doesn't know what she's doing, she's already having a hard time when BAM! Her long lost grandmother shows up who is awful. You think Mrs. Bennet from Pride and Prejudice is awful? You have not met Evelina's long lost grandmother. Basically, so now she's struggling with family drama, her own inability to be socially on cue, this overbearing suitor, this guy she likes but she thinks is totally out of her league. So much drama. But my overall review of Evelina though is I absolutely love it. If you love Jane Austen's works, definitely go read Evelina. I highly, highly recommend it. I definitely think we see Bernie taking significant steps forward in the creation of realistic characters. However, I do think she does fall prey to what all the authors at her time were doing, which was making her female leads just too angelic. Evelina is like at heart this naive, unspoiled angel of light, kind of. And I feel like that's what we see. That's also what we see in the mysteries of Udolpho and just so many other works of this time. But at the same time, we see a fantastic comedy of manners and we get to see London of this time period really sketched out well for us. And all of the fashionable things the upper classes did at this time are talked about in depth and it's just a fascinating read. So again, highly recommend that. Go read that if you love Pride and Prejudice, which I know you do because the poll said so. So really quickly, let's talk about how Evelina affected Jane Austen's writing. So when I started reading Evelina, I didn't really expect to just pick up so many things that were like, I've read this before. <laughs> and it is like, there are so many plot points you can definitely tell Jane Austen's drawing off of. So first off, let's talk a little bit about Pride and Prejudice. I think what I see from Evelina in Pride and Prejudice is the awkwardness of first impressions. The very first time Evelina meets Lord Orville, she does not make a good impression at the ball. And not only that, but just like how we see Elizabeth overhearing what Darcy has to say about her at the very first ball they meet at, Evelina through the grapevine gets to hear what Lord Orville has to say about her. And it is not at all flattering. So as soon as that went down, I'm like, oh, Pride and Prejudice vibes there. And too, from that point forward, it is this question of like, can she ever overcome this first impression she made on Lord Orville? Next up, let's talk about Sense and Sensibility. Of course, Willoughby, the guy who's an overbearing suitor who, you know, not to give too many spoilers, but I feel like there's a reason Willoughby's named Willoughby, right? Like, you know, may not be the best guy ever on the planet. I think overall Willoughby in Sense and Sensibility, it's a combination of Willoughby from Evelina and also Valancourt from The Mysteries of Udolpho. So we see this sort of hybrid in there. And of course there's a huge dash of Jane Austen's own imagination in him, but I definitely see articles of both in Willoughby from Sense and Sensibility. Also in Sense and Sensibility, the awkward relationship the Dashwood sisters are forced into with the Steele sisters really reminds me of Evelina in this book when she's sort of forced into this relationship with also her long lost cousins who show up. And I think that same dynamic is very interesting. And staying on this awkward dynamic, let's talk about Mansfield Park really quick. In Mansfield Park, Fanny has to go home at one point and visit her poor family. And it's so awkward and horrible for her. That is both my favorite and my least favorite part of Mansfield Park. It's epic the way Jane Austen captured it, 
but it's also so painful to read for poor Fanny. So when it did hit the certain part of Evelina, when she has to go stay with her long lost grandmother and interact with her cousins and everything, it reminded me so much of that part of Mansfield Park. And I was like, I have definitely seen this dynamic before and it is straight out of Mansfield Park or rather, Mansfield Park is straight out of Evelina. There's obviously noticeable differences, all the characters are different and everything, but I feel like the overall feel and concept of the dynamic is the same. Now let's talk about Northanger Abbey and Emma. I feel like there is a lot from Northanger Abbey and Emma in this. One thing is that in Northanger Abbey, the Henry Tilney, Catherine Moreland relationship reminds me so much of the Lord Orville Evelina relationship. Not so much on the joking, but just this concept of where there's this really naive girl who's out in society for the first time and she comes across this guy who is very noble and does sort of like take her under his wing because that's what we really see Henry Tilney do. He even cautions her against Thorpe. I think Tilney in a lot of ways is there to take care of Catherine. At the same time, I feel like Jane Austen is even satirizing a little bit Evelina because in Evelina, she meets her best friend and then like, they're instantly best friends. It's like, oh, you are my long lost sister of heart. We are one now. And I feel like that's the same exact thing that Catherine does in Northanger when she meets Isabella Thorpe. It's like, oh, we're best friends. We met like yesterday, but like nothing will ever separate us. And so I feel like there was a little bit of satire there, but I think she was satirizing the whole overall age of sensibility because we definitely see Jane's opinion on that throughout all of her works where too much sensibility is just not a great thing. And also we see that a little bit in Emma and Emma's relationship with Harriet where maybe it wasn't the best thing that Emma and Harriet became sudden best friends. Something else seen in both Northanger Abbey and Emma is a really awkward being stuck in a coach with a guy situation where we see this in Emma with Mr. Elton's sudden proposal. And we see this in Northanger Abbey when Thorpe kidnaps her from the walk. And so both of these elements were actually drawing off a long tradition of it's dangerous to get into carriages with guys, which was in several novels before Jane Austen's. It was sort of a trope she used. And we definitely see that in Evelina as well. So yeah, definitely overall at least in my opinion there is a lot of aspects that Jane drew off of from Fanny Burney just not only in plot points but again in character development and really Fanny Burney started to write about everyday life that social realism of course there are things that were a little bit romanticized and obviously the age of sensibility was there definitely sprinkling in some over-the-top emotional reactions but still this was a huge leap forward that Jane Austen was able to build off of. So let me again know in the comments below which is your favorite novel. My name is Ellie Dashwood and this is my channel where I talk about classic literature and history. If you like any of those things please subscribe and keep having an awesome day because you're awesome. Bye! Baby no! No! Baby! Baby! No! You're not allowed to eat the flowers! My cat has been trying to eat those flowers all day. And yes, I, I call her baby because she's the baby of the family. She's a tiny baby. Merely she's like, I don't know. How old are you? Are you gonna turn four this year? Yeah, she's still a baby.